Hey guys, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Problem number 45, uh, chapter 23, Gauss law. Let me read out the problem. Two charged concentric spherical shells, so these are shells, not uh, solid spheres. Two charged concentric spherical shells have radii uh, 10 centimeter and 15 centimeter. The charge on the inner shell is 4.00 into 10 to the power minus 8 coulomb. And, uh, and that on the outer shell is 2.00 into 10 to the power minus 8 coulomb. Find the electric field at part A uh, at a distance of 12 centimeters from the center and part B at a distance of 20 centimeters from the center. So, uh, what we have is we are having two concentric charged spheres. So, one of them like this, the other one like this. The inner one has a radius of 10 centimeters, outer one has a radius of 15 centimeters. Inner one has a charge of 4 into 10 to the power minus 8 coulombs and outer one has a charge of 2 into 10 to the power minus 8 coulomb. We are asked to find out uh, feel at a distance of 12 centimeters from the center and at a distance of 20 centimeters from the center. Now we are dealing with charged spherical shells here, uniformly charged spherical shells here. So, what we do is, we'll first study the behavior of these shells. We'll find out field due to the shells, both inside and outside the shells. By the way, one point is there, one additional point is there uh, regarding these shells. If we are having a solid conducting sphere, solid but conducting sphere, in the previous problem, in the previous problem, we had a non-conducting sphere, solid sphere, non-conducting solid sphere. But if we have a metallic conducting sphere, okay, conducting solid sphere, conducting, and if you charge it, okay, and if you charge it, then since charges are free to roam around in a metal, in a conductor, because of the mutual repulsion, that all charge will go to the surface. All charge will be distributed on the surface. That would mean if we are having a, this is a conducting solid sphere and on the other hand if we are having a, 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 a spherical shell, a uniformly charged spherical shell, as, as far as electricity is concerned, as far as electrostatics is concerned, as far as charge study is concerned, these two are same. So whatever we will study for a uniformly charged uh, spherical shell will also be valid for a conducting charged shell okay conducting solid sphere okay will be also valid for conducting solid sphere because even if it's a solid sphere so it has matter inside it but charge will still ri uh, reside on the surface as is the case here so no charge inside no charge inside their behavior will be same okay their behavior will be same so we'll be dealing with the uh, uh, uniformly charged spherical shells here but same thing will apply to solid conducting uh, spheres so we'll find out field first outside the shell, outside the shell. So I have considered a charged, uniformly charged spherical shell here of charge Q and radius R. First outside I'm considering a Gaussian surface here, concentric sphere, Gaussian sphere, concentric. That has to be the case because of the symmetry. And we'll solve Gauss, Gauss law for this. Integral E dot dA <coughs> is equal to Q enclosed divided by epsilon 0. Okay, Q enclosed divided by epsilon 0. Again, uh, exactly same things what we did uh, in the previous session. As per electric field is concerned, direction of electric field is concerned, because of the spherical symmetry involved, we have only one choice for the direction of electric field and that is radially outward. Since it is positively charged, so radially outward. If it were negatively charged, then field direction would be radially inward. That is the only difference. So uh, at this point, field is radially outward this way. At this point, field will be radially outward this way. At this point, field will be radially outward this way. At this point, field will be radially outward this way. So you consider any point, field is radially outward. Okay, field is radially outward. Then direction of area. Oh, one more point about the field. Again, from the spherical symmetry involved, spherical symmetry involved, we can easily conclude that for all the points lying on the Gaussian surface, for all the points lying on the Gaussian surface, magnitude of the electric field will be same. Not the direction, magnitude of the electric field will be same. 
not inside the Gaussian surface, not outside the Gaussian surface. We're talking only about the points lying on the Gaussian surface. Field magnitude will be same. Field direction is radially outward. Then direction of area. For any closed surface, direction of area by convention is taken radially outward. So if I consider an area element here, direction is radially outward. If I consider area element here, direction is radially outward. If I consider uh, area element here, direction is radially outward, radially outward. So at all points, direction of field and area is same. Okay, at all points, direction of field and area is same. So three points. Number one, field magnitude is same at all the points of the Gaussian surface. Number two, direction of field is radially outward everywhere. Number three, direction of field and area is same, which means angle between them is zero. So that is what we need for the left hand side. Right hand side, we need charge enclosed. Well, all of this charge on the spherical shell is lying inside this Gaussian surface. So Q enclosed is nothing but capital Q. Okay, so this is nothing but capital Q. So we are all ready to solve this Gauss law. So we have integral E dot dA, I'll write E dA cos of theta is equal to Q enclosed divided by epsilon 0. E is constant for all the points on the Gaussian surface, not inside the Gaussian surface, not outside the Gaussian surface. We are only considered with points lying on the Gaussian surface here in this integral. We have nothing to do what is happening inside or outside. Nothing to do with that. Theta is 0 degrees. Q enclosed is Q. Since E is constant, we'll take it out. Cos of 0 is 1. We'll take it out. Integration of dA is A, which is total area. Total area of the Gaussian uh, sphere. Where is it? Total area of the Gaussian sphere, which is having a radius of small r. So 4 pi r square. 4 pi little r square. Q enclosed is capital Q divided by epsilon 0. So this implies E is equal to 4 pi r square goes downstairs. So 1 by 4 pi epsilon 0 is already there. Q divided by r square or field outside is equal to 1 by 4 pi epsilon 0 is electrostatic constant. I write gamma for that in short. Gamma Q divided by r square. This result looks familiar. It is same as that of a point charge. That would mean, and we derived it for only for points lying outside it. Our, our point is here, our point is here, our point is here, somewhere outside the shell. So for points lying outside the spherical shell, spherical shell behaves like a point charge located at its center because R is taken from the center. Exactly same thing what we did in the previous problem for solid non-conducting uniform uh, uniformly charged non-conducting sphere. Exactly the same thing. Okay, exactly the same thing. So field behaves like a point charge. Note that field is inversely proportional to R square. Okay, inversely proportional to R square, distance square. What about the surface point? On the surface of sphere, spherical shell, okay, on the surface of spherical shell, somewhere here, somewhere here, somewhere here. Distance from the center is simply radius of the sh uh, shell, which is capital R. So in a of small r, we'll write k down capital R. So E on the surface, gamma Q divided by capital R square. Gamma Q divided by capital R square. So outside, for points lying outside the uniformly charged shell, it behaves like a point charge located at the center, inversely proportional to R square. Surface, gamma Q divided by capital R square. Now for the points lying inside the uh, shell, okay, inside the uniformly charged spherical shell, this is the Gaussian surface I have considered. Distance r will again use Gauss law. This is for inside points. Integral E dA cos of theta is equal to Q enclosed divided by epsilon 0. There is no charge lying inside this Gaussian sphere. 
all the charges lying outside it. So this has to be zero. This has to be zero. Okay, so Q enclosed is zero. That means integral e dot e dA cos of theta is zero. So let's analyze. If we consider electric field, first let's consider area element. Consider area element anywhere direction is radially outward. Direction is radially outward. Direction is radially outward. Any area element direction is radially outward. Consider field. Consider field. If at all there is some field because this whole integral is zero, so something is zero or addition of the things is zero. So if at all there is electric field, by symmetry it has to be either radially outward or radially inward. But like inside the charged shell, so maybe radially inward. But one thing is for sure, either it is radially inward or radially outward. So field is either this way or this way. 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 Now note one thing. If field is radially outward, then direction of area and field is same at all points. So angle is zero and cos of zero is one. So that means cos of theta is non-zero. It's not zero anywhere on the surface. If we consider dA, well, there is some area element here. There is some area. There is some area. There is some dA. There is some dA. dA is not zero anywhere. So this is non-zero. Oh, one thing I missed. If field is radially inward, then angle is 180. And cos of 180 is uh, minus 1. So again, non-zero. So cos of theta is non-zero everywhere at all points on the surface. dA is non-zero everywhere at all points. So in order to make sum zero, integration is at the end of the day summation. So in order to make the sum zero, E has to be zero at all points. Normally it would work the other way also. Somewhere this is zero, somewhere this is zero, somewhere this is zero. So the integral is zero overall. But this is non-zero everywhere. This is non-zero everywhere. So this has to be zero at all points. Then only this integral can be zero. So this implies E inside is equal to zero. E inside is zero. There is no electric field inside the spherical shell. Okay? There is no electric field inside the spherical shell. What if we approach spherical surface of the shell from inside? If you are infinitely close to the shell from inside, field is zero. But if you approach the surface from outside, from outside, if you are approaching it from outside, if you are infinitely close to the surface, field is gamma q divided by r square. Meaning field is a discontinuous function on the surface. Okay, field is a discontinuous function on the surface. Just inside the shell, field is zero. Just outside the shell, it's gamma q divided by capital R square. So it's a discontinuous function on the on the surface. Normally, whenever we say we talk about uh, field on the surface of the shell, we generally mean it from outside. We generally mean it from outside. Okay, so that's the reason I'm not writing E surface here. E surface is equal to zero because generally we mean field from outside uh, when we are approaching surface from outside. So field inside is zero. Field outside is inversely proportional to R square. So it behaves like a point charge and field on the surface is gamma Q divided by capital R square. I'll also draw a graph here. It has an interesting graph. Uh, where am I? So if this, this is distance r from the center, this is magnitude of the field, this is the center. Uh, and this is here capital R, that means the surface. Zero distance corresponds to center. <coughs> and capital R distance from the center corresponds to surface of the shell. So this part is inside from center to surface. And surface onwards is outside region. Field inside uh, is zero at all points, so zero at all points inside. Field on the surface is suddenly gamma Q divided by capital R square, gamma Q divided by capital R square. 
and for points lying outside field is inversely proportional to r square field is inversely proportional to r square okay so this is the behavior of a uniformly charged spherical shell now let's come to the problem okay many of you may already uh, be knowing these results so you could have skipped this part fine now let's directly come to the problem remember inside field is zero outside it behaves like a point charge located at the center now our problem is like this we have two concentric spherical shells inner one with a radius of 10 cm outer one with a radius of 15 cm inner one with a charge of which i am calling one shell one and outer one shell two 4.00 into 10 to the power minus 8 and outer one is having a charge of 2.00 into 10 to the power minus 8 coulombs we are asked to find out field in part a at a distance of 12 cm from the center so this is part a at a distance of 12 cm from the center well 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 12 cm is greater than 10 but less than 15 so meaning we are somewhere in between the two we are somewhere here at this point this is 12 cm we are somewhere at this point this point is lying inside the shell 2 so meaning field due to shell 2 will be zero because field inside is zero and this point is lying outside shell 1 so shell 1 will behave like a point charge located at its center so its field will be gamma q divided by r square so field at this point 12 cm distance point is e1 plus e2 e1 being the field due to shell 1 and e2 being field due to the shell 2 this part is zero e1 is gamma q1 i have written capital q 1 divided by r square so let's substitute the values gamma is 9 into 10 to the power 9 in si system q1 is 4.00 into 10 to the power minus 8 coulomb again in si system distance r is 12 cm so 12 into 10 to the power minus 2 meters with a square there okay r square so you have to work this out this field comes out to be i have already worked it out is 2.50 into 10 to the power 4 2.50 into 10 to the power 4 newton per coulomb we have used everything in si system so field will have si units newton per coulomb then in part b we are asked to find out field at a distance of uh, 20 cm well 20 cm is greater than 10 greater than 15 so we are dealing with a point lying somewhere here at a distance of 20 cm note that this point is lying outside both of them outside shell 1 outside shell 2 so shell 1 will behave like a point charge located at its center so will have charge q1 at the center shell 2 will also behave like a point charge located at the center so will have charge q2 at the center so total charge at the center would be q1 plus q2 so field which would be e1 plus e2 is simply gamma times q1 plus q2 total charge divided by r square both of them are behaving like point charge so total charge of that point is q1 plus q2 so gamma q divided by r square gamma q1 plus q2 divided by r square so gamma is 9 into 10 to the power 9 q1 plus q2 4 plus 2 is 6 6.00 0 into 10 to the power minus 8 r is uh, 20 cm so 20 into 10 to the power minus 2 square 20 to the power minus 2 to convert it into meters so this is what we have to work out i have already done that field comes out to be 1.35 into 10 to the power 4 newton per coulomb this is field at a point which is at a distance of 20 cm from the center 1.35 into 10 to the power 4 of course direction of these fields is radially outward remember we already talked about that because of the spherical symmetry direction is radially outward both of them are positively charged so both of them will have direction radially outward e1 will be radially outward e2 will also be radially outward okay that's why i simply added them e1 plus e2 is that fine that do for this session we'll be using results these results what we talked about for a spherical shell we'll be using these results in upcoming problems that do for this session